and gentlemen, please make your way to your seats. The show is about to begin. Well, hey there, Litter Mates. Welcome back to Boss Kitty Live. I am your host, Boss Kitty. Go figure. I've got ears on. It's like it's like there's a whole cat theme going on there, right? I hope you're all having a wonderful Wednesday. Oh my goodness, you are my night in watery glasses. Thank you. Uh, oh, this will stick. Uh, whatever, I'll figure it out. I hope you're all having a wonderful Wednesday. I, well, my weeks are full of chaos right now, but in a good way, of course. Um, so we've got Wild Card Wednesday going on tonight. Really, really stoked about that. We're going to be working on the dishcloth that I posted in uh, Discord last week. So if you've been working on that, you've been trying to read a chart, or you've been trying to read the pattern, and you have questions, I am here for them. Just be patient, because there are a lot of wonderful people in this chat, and I don't get all of them. So, so you might have to repeat yourself once or twice. Trust me, if you have to repeat yourself three times, Usually TK Leftmost or Yarn Pirate will get my attention somehow or another. Thank you, Winter. Thank you. Um, working from home has changed the dynamic for everything, right? So for the last few years. So I tend to work in my pajamas because I'm a stinky, lazy person. But for the show, I try to take my shower and you know, blow dry my hair and everything during my lunch. And if I can get that done, then I have enough time to curl my hair <laughs> before the show. That doesn't always happen. So if you see me in pigtails or something... That generally means I did not take a shower during my lunch. I took it right after work. <laughs> Cat theme sounds like a good idea. You could name your yarn weights. That would be brilliant, Left. Somebody should get on that. <laughs> Hi, Draca. How are you? Stephanie, hello. Good to see you. Oni, hello to you as well. Crochet. Jesse from Texas. Miss Monster. Sage Fitz. Dawn Marie. Night Dominion. I know there's so many other people in here. Michaela. Uh, you found a whole rich uh, blanket coat today for 70 get out of town, $70, and you're so happy. You should be happy at that. So if you're new to the show, welcome. We're thrilled to have you here, as always. Thank you for being um, We do a little fun thing called Wheel of Goodies and goof ups We do it every half an hour, three times during the show. It's going to start at 6.45, so in about 15 minutes. And then at 7... 7.15 and then 7.45. Um, but we're also doing our subscriber giveaway for January because I forgot at the last two uh, sessions. What? So basically, if you are a YouTube subscriber, which is absolutely free, my loves, um, and you've commented on one of our shows in the month of January, you are eligible for our subscriber giveaway, which is a $30 gift card. Hmm? I'm going to do those right after each of my um, Wheel of Goodies and Goofing Rots. Oh, I guess you're right. I can. Anyway, um, so if you've... TK always likes to come in and tell me things while I'm trying to explain something and then I lose my place. Ah. Oh, yeah. So if you're a subscriber and you've commented on one of our shows from January, then you're eligible for that $30 gift card. If you've, if you've commented on multiple shows from January, then I might pick you as a final... You have more um, opportunity to be picked as a finalist because we pick one finalist from each show. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> Hello, Story, Vicky. Live number two for the evening. Awesome. Hello, Jesse. T, it's good to see you. So we're actually going to kick off with that, picking our first finalist off our first show. Um, I also have some grab bag yarn that I'm going to show off to you guys. Because, because the grab bags drop on Monday when the show starts. And those will be for patrons exclusively for the first 48 hours. And then whatever's left over drops for everybody else at the start of Wednesday's show. So those are just a week away for some of you. Okay, so before we get into everything though, let's go ahead and pick our first um, finalist. So give me one second while I get everything up here. I'm going to go ahead and grab this right here. Copy, control V, and then I'll just go ahead and share it with you guys. There, you can see everything I'm doing. Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Hey, I can math. Get those YouTube comments. So this has nine comments on it. That's what they're going to pick from. So right down here, we're going to push the start button. 
It's going through all of those people who commented on that show. Goth Emo Raver, congratulations. You are our first finalist for January's subscriber giveaway. That's so exciting. If you're in here, if not, we'll find you. Don't worry. So let me go ahead and... Are you so excited? I'm so excited, right? We're going to go ahead and get... Um, we're going to go ahead and get Goth Emo Raver right up here. Just give me one second. Hi, Mittens. How are you? I think that your, sh uh, your outfit is a little... Um, outdated. There's no longer Christmas. It's laundry day. You gotta get on that, dude. Like, we could get all the laundry done now, because in a month, we don't have a washer and dryer. You haven't done laundry since November? Oh, that's why you stink. Get out of here. Get out of here. That's, oh. And I'm not smelling your finger. Get out of here. That's gross. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, and this is the wheel that we use, so I'm just gonna write goth emo raver right here. And now she is on that wheel. Let me make sure I got that spelled right. I did. Okay, cool. Then we're good to go. So let's uh let's get to the show. How does that sound? It's exciting, right? You love Mitten's outfit, right? I know. <laughs> like he forgot that it's a new year. Ah. Uh, welcome, Oni. So glad to have you here. Thank you for being brave. Ew, he's so gross, you guys. Okay, so let's go to our workspace. I have not actually started this dishcloth. I'm restarting it because if you'll remember, it calls for like size seven needles, I think, and I knit really loose. So I've grabbed some size sixes off a different project to be that I will not name right now. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get my 43 stitches on here again. So that's how we're gonna start off. Did anybody actually start the washcloth or were you all kind of nervous and waiting for me to start it? Either way is totally fine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, this purple colorway right here, let's go over these. We'll go over these a few times. So these are all grab bag colorways, you guys. These are all going to be in the grab bag. We'll start on this side. This is a throwback from the Toil and Trouble Box set. It's actually Come We Fly. So this was the Sanderson Sisters inspired colorway. Um, unfortunately, it was one of those times where the Stellina that's in the yarn I overprocessed it just a little bit, so it doesn't have as much sparkle as the rest of them do. It's the exact same color other than that, but you guys know how I am. Um, if it's not super, super glittery, like check this one out, you can see the difference. Then it's not going in your guys' box sets. Hmm? This one's Widow Flower. Uh, so that's why these are in here. And there's a, there's like four, four or eight of these, I don't remember. Um, and then this one right here was also a throwback from the um, from the Toil and Trouble box set. This is what I started out with for our Sanderson Sisters colorway. So I was just going to go with Winnie. And it didn't turn out. I didn't. I mean, it, it's a great color, but it did not do what I wanted it to do. This one worked out much better for me. But this is still a really great color. You've got some kind of mustardy yellow in there. This kind of deep foresty green. And then these speckles of red throughout. So those are those. These two right here. These are perfectly fine skeins of kitty glitter yarn except for that they are bkdk and we do not carry bkdk weight yarn so i have a box full of widow flower and cold as ice in in a bkdk kitty glitter that is the only way that you will get your hot little hands on this because we're not going to carry it for some time i suspect at least another year or so so these there's a bunch of these that will be in those box sets and then this guy right here you guys know the um the make along that we're doing right so I dyed up some specialty yarn just for my own sweater. And there were three or four skeins that I did the gray base with uh, different things. So this is actually fairy farts on a gray base. And I loved it. I thought it was really pretty, but it didn't quite fit what I wanted to do for the sweater. So I threw it over into the grab bag section. There's only one of these. So there's one of these. And then I think there's another one that's similar along the same vein. I don't remember what it was though. Isn't it beautiful? Like this, I'm really tempted to just make this a normal colorway, but not not now, not now, it's not happening right now. So so here are some examples of what, um, thank you. Uh, here are some examples, thank you Hooked, I loved it too, um, of what'll be in the grab bag. And those grab bags are three skeins of yarn for $65. As you can see, all the yarn is in great shape. It's, it's still really, really pretty. It's just not colorways or bases that we necessarily carry, which is why you guys are getting them for a steal. So if you want first grab at those, you need to be a patron. You can head over to patreon.com slash boss kitty to join up on any tier. And those will be released on Monday when we start the show for everybody. 
um, they'll be released for our patrons. And then patrons have 48 hours to buy however many they want. And once they're all gone, they're gone. Sometimes we have leftovers and then those will go on sale to the public at the beginning of Wednesday's show. Dirty Fairy, exactly. Dirty Fairy thoughts. Love that green. I know it's just so decadent. You're not a glittery person, so the gray fairy farts is up your alley. Night Dominia, I agree. Like, it's, I love that it's so, like, fairy farts itself is so fun and vibrant and flirty, and it's great. But I like that this is toned down and kind of grimy, right? Like, I feel like fairy farts is the sealy court, and that this is like the unsealy court of fairy farts. And if you play D&D, &D, that totally made sense to you. If you don't, I'm really sorry for the reference. Uh, so, there you go. Let me continue to wrap around my needle here. No worries, Emily. Hello, hello. If you added some darker speckles to the fairy farts, you could make it themed into the end. Oh my gosh, Jinxie doll. Thank you. Ah, we, we are on the same wavelength here. Thank you so much. Uh, that was really funny. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, two, three, four, five. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see, that's thirty. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's forty. We'll just say right here it looks good. That's your favorite one. Yeah, I really like that one too. Now you're speaking my Justin Files language. I love it, Bubbles. Okay. This is all tied up. Cotton yarn is weird sometimes. Grungy fairy farts. <laughs> Marie, I'm doing really well. How are you? It does look kind of like a dirty jawbreaker. <laughs> Old fairy farts. <laughs> I love it. No, Zuzu. You can't be in here. Oh, you stinker. There's a wild baby kitten in the room. BK, my dear, respectfully, you don't want to be in my brain. It's an autistic mess right now. That's okay. Mine is just an ADHD mess. I feel ya. It's all over the place. Hi, Stinky. What's up? You can come on over. Do you want me to go to full host? There we go. Hello, beautiful. Oh my goodness. Can you say hi to everybody? This is Zuzu. We got Zuzu in November, I believe. And she is getting so big. I think she's almost five months old now. And she's calming down. I'd like, well, that's actually a dirty lie. She's not calming down. She's insane. But she's stopped biting as much. She knows not to bite now. Can you say hi to everybody, Zuzu? And she's the youngest of our three kitties. I should say four with mittens. Okay, I'm going to give you back to your daddy now, okay? You're being very good, though. Normally, you're a little squirmer. There we go. I just want to make sure she doesn't get caught in my buttons. She is so pretty and so sweet, um, and she's very unique. Like, her, her facial um, coloring is really unique. And what's been interesting is TK was sure that her the black hair was going to come in more as she got older and that the oranges would muddle out. And I was like, I think she's going to get lighter, and she's getting lighter. She's turning kind of a, I don't know, orangey creamsicle color in a lot of spots. I know she's getting so big, Miriam. They, they grow so fast. If you have not hit that subscribe button, this is a great time to do it. Please remember that that's the only way that you're eligible to play in the Wheel of Goof, uh, Goodies and Goofamups, which is in two whole minutes. Plus, this is the year of sharing. So get out there and share the show. Hit the like button. All that jazz, guys. If you weren't here on Monday and you didn't watch the VOD, we have some very exciting news. Uh, TK and I put an offer in on a house here in Salem and it was accepted so now we go through the process of making sure it's all up to code so that we can buy it uh we put our earnest money down yesterday so now it's all official and the inspections start on Friday which is already overwhelming like I had no idea what all the stuff you have to do in order to even buy a house so that's a thing like you've got to do you don't have to but you've like got your normal house inspection we have to do a radon inspection we've got a sewer scope we're doing like it's all over the place thank you we're very very excited and very terrified at the same time it is very very exciting her color combination is just gorgeous. Thank you, Stormy. I agree. You guys are so sweet. Thank you. Hi, little brat. 
I'm keeping your fingers crossed so that way I'm able to keep my kitten and not have to send her to my boyfriend's family, but I will have to cry. Why? What's going on, Marie? Hopefully everything's okay. What were you doing? Counting? Measuring? I was counting. That was all. So I was measuring the amount of tail that I would need, basically, to do a long tail cast on for 43 stitches. The hardest part of buying a house is the waiting period. Congrats on the first part. Once the pa once past the inspection, you can do the fun part. Right? We So we've already kind of cheated a little bit, and we've bought a dining room table that we needed. It was all secondhand, and I'm starting to look at, like, secondhand washers and dryers because I can't go that long without one in my house. Uh, so we've already kind of started doing that, but we're not really jumping in until after the inspections. In the meantime, though, guys, guess what time it is? Oh, I was from Thursday. Time for the wheel of goodies and goof em ups. Um, so let's go ahead and pick our first contestant of the evening. It's going to be one of our beautiful, wonderful litter mates, one of our subscribers. We love you all so much. Winner, winner, kitty dinner. Let's see who it is. Lynn on everything in the new place. Anastasia Debon, congratulations! You are our first contestant on the Wheel of Goodies and Goof em Ups. That's so exciting! Yay! Okay, let's get over to the wheel. Hello, oh, wheel. Oh, 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 oh. Here is our beautiful wheel. Our wheel's been pretty, pretty cool lately. There's only been a few little, you know, fits that it's thrown here and there. But I'm feeling you, Anastasia. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna go in your favor. For those of you who are new, this is the wheel of goodies and goof em ups. It's got good things and bad things on it, and then just silly things too. So we've got free shipping, international and domestic, for bosskittyshop.com because we are a yarn shop too. In case you didn't know that, uh, we've got yarn tarot, game over. We've got uh, Ravelry patterns for ten dollars or five dollars, depending on where you hit. Merch codes for free stickers and uh, buttons. Blinky rolls where you can win free yarn. Um, and then dad jokes and adjective animal sounds as well. So I'm going to go ahead and push the spin button, Anastasia, and we're going to see what's going to happen. Free shipping. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're a winner. Monetarily, I will say that the free shipping is probably the best one you can get, aside from maybe Blinky actually giving you a natural 20, because you get to use that code on any purchase in bosskittyshop.com, your shipping is free. It doesn't matter if you are in Canada. It doesn't matter if you're in France. It doesn't matter if you live next door to me. It really doesn't matter. So what you'll want to do, my dear, is you will want to reach out to me via Discord. Um, and Or you can email us at info at bosskittyshop.com. And just let me know um, what your email is. And basically get in contact with me so I can give you the code for your free shipping. It will last for one year. You've got It's a one-time use and it expires after a year. So congratulations, and thank you so much for being a subscriber. Okay, we'll, we'll see you in about half an hour, okay? See you later, alligator. See you later, alligator. Okay, let's get back to it. <laughs> it is super exciting. I always get really stoked when people win. That is pretty amazing. I should probably count, shouldn't I? It's, it's generally a good idea to do, to count your stitches at some point. Five... 10, 15, 20. Nope, I already got screwed up. 5, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. 26 stitches. Ah, ah, ah. So, yeah, we're not even like a little over halfway. Next door, your bank account would be empty, right? People are just knocking on my door. They're like, hey, I need to buy this. I'm like, I am in my pajamas. It's 3 a.m. Store's closed right now. <laughs> Sage fits, don't you dare. What yarn am I using? I'm using the sugar and cream. Is that what it's called? It's some it's some cotton yarn that I got in a very strange yarn shop in Astoria. No, Tillamook, Tillamook, Oregon. I wouldn't really call it a yarn shop. It's a I like to think of it as a yard sale shop. Uh, they claim to be a yarn shop, but everything in there is kind of just all over the place. Most of the skeins of yarn are half used. I mean, it's cool. It's it's just interesting. There's like old stationery there. <laughs> Little figurines. I don't know. It's just, it always gives me yard sale vibes. But I they had a bunch of the, uh, of the cotton in there. And I think I bought like five or six skeins of it at the time because they were super cheap. And I always wanted to make dishcloths. 
You love counting stitches. Commercial knitting season has started for you today, and you've done too much counting for these dog sweaters. Emily, oh, I'm so sorry. But I have to be honest, I cannot wait to see the dog sweaters because I think those things are adorable. Fay territory. <laughs> it is very much Fay ter territory, right? Like, they're like, do you want that yarn? Let's make a deal. I'm like, no, 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 no. Back away slowly. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. We need three more stitches. One, two, and three. So there are all 43 stitches. And as I said, I went down a size in needle. And as you can see, this is still going to be a big ass washcloth. So I'm perfectly fine with going down that size of needle. It's, it's clearly not an issue for me. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start the pattern. You love Tillamook, Tillamook cheese, Tillamook ice cream for the win. They have black licorice ice cream. If you go to the Tillamook cheese factory, it's the only place I can find it. It will turn your tongue black and your teeth black. And I don't care because it's so delicious. Wait, no, it doesn't turn it black anymore. I think it's white these days, but it used to turn it black because they used to put black food coloring in it. I think it's just white these days, which is still totally fine. I don't care. It's just so good. <laughs> Uh, there's a store here. You pay way too much for, for to, two for Tillamook cheese. You mean, do they still do the cheese tours? Yeah, Elizabeth, they do. It's weird. They've changed it a lot. They re, um, so for those of you who are not from the West coast or have never been to Oregon, um, we are proud of our Tillamook cheese, much the way that Wisconsin is proud of their cheese. It's really freaking delicious. All of their dairy is delicious. And Tillamook is a small little city right along the coast basically just right off the coast a little bit um and they have this huge cheese factory that you can tour and they've just re um revamped it basically a few years ago and so now it is constantly slammed and packed non-stop you've got all these schools that come in with their um for their field trips you've got families down there i mean that's never the the parking lot is never not full of cars and it's kind of I don't know. I don't deal well with really, really crowded spaces. It just freaks me. It doesn't freak me out. It just, I, I get in, uh, anxiety from it. And so it's not a lot of fun for me in that case. Um, but I know a lot of other people have fun. There's another one in Tillamook or near Tillamook called Blue Heron. And it is a cheese factory as well. It's much smaller. Um, and it's also a vineyard. Like they sell wine as well. So you can do wine tasting with cheese. And they have like little mustards that you can try and things like that. So that's like the adult version of Tillamook. And I tend to go there instead. But, you know, to each their own. Get it here. That is that is totally amazing. Oh my gosh, Trina, that's fantastic. Do I prefer circle over straight knitting needles? Michaela... I think I do. They're much more flexible and durable in that sense. Um, I've broken straight needles before by sitting on them, getting come cotton cars, things like that. Um, I mean, I'll use either kind. I will use either kind, which is great. But because I have the interchangeables, there's really no need for me to buy straight needles. Um, I have everything from a size 2 to a size 15 with my interchangeables. So it's very rare that I have to buy needles. As TK said, I should actually probably knit Cheese Lady. <laughs> Blue Heron had the petting. Yes, the petting farm. Or you can buy like the corn and stuff to uh, to feed them. They're so cute. Okay, so let's find our pattern and see what it says. Cast on 43 stitches and knit one row. So that's the very first thing we're going to do is we're just going to knit this first row. So I've turned my work. I'm going to go ahead and put my needle in my first stitch, wrap around like we I taught you guys a few weeks ago. So through the front, underneath, just go underneath that piece of yarn and bring it back through the loop. That's all in its stitches. And that's all they want you to do in this first row. And I suspect in the first few rows, honestly. So we're just going to sit here and we're going to knit these stitches. And if you're making a dishcloth and you're using cotton, you will find that cotton, it's interesting. Cotton has more give than a lot of other fibers. But when I'm knitting with it or spinning with it, it feels so much more stiff than other fibers. It's, but it's stretchy. I just, just it's, it's weird. It's kind of like when you add um, cornstarch and water together, right? And it makes that kind of liquid, not liquid. I feel like cotton is the cornstarch of fibers. That's where my brain went. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> she reminds me wants to offer commentary. TK, his voice, his voice travels. He's he's got he he speaks from the diaphragm. <laughs> saltwater taffy. I hate saltwater taffy. I can't stand it. Ugh. Uh, except for licorice oh, and cinnamon. Those two. Those two I'll take, but that's about it. Lydia loves the Jacks. Blue Heron is amazing. Tell them it's the Disneyland of cheese, though. It really is. Like, you can see cows. Not real cows. But they tell you how they get the milk, which, you know, seems pretty obvious. And they have viewing areas where you can see the cheese being processed and aged and all of that kind of stuff. And then they have a whole restaurant area and a gift shop. Legit, there's a Tillamook Cheese gift shop. You can buy a $65 sweatshirt that says Tillamook Cheese, um, Tillamook, Oregon, on it. It's a real thing. You love saltwater taffy from New Jersey. It's so good. <laughs> On non new toad. Yes, that all knowing eye. Yes, TK, that is exactly what I'm talking about. Way to be smart. It's the oobleck of fibers. Thank you, Lillian. That's much better. When you spin cotton, you have to blend it. You hate the texture. Emily, I agree. Um, it dries my hands out when I spin it. And if I, if I knit too long with it or crochet too long with it, it'll dry my hands out as well. Unless I'm using like a really soft cotton. Um, yeah, it's not enjoyable a lot of the time for me. And that's just my personal preference. Everybody, you know, everybody has their own thing. We actually have a skein of cotton undyed in, in, our, um, in our dye studio that I've been meaning to dye and figuring out if I could do cotton. It just has never happened. Okay, so we've knit that first row. Congrats on us. Pat ourselves on the back. We're amazing. It's not a thing in the UK like candy corn. I don't like candy corn either, so I think maybe I should move to the UK. <laughs> uh, Trina, I know that you said that you have you started the um, dishcloth. Did you have any questions so far regarding it? Did anybody else who has started their dishcloth have any questions? Let's uh, let's see what the next piece says. Okay. So, slipping the first stitch of every row pearl-wise pearl with the yarn at back of work, knit seven more rows. Okay, so what that means, just so you guys are aware, because that sounds kind of tricky. This first stitch here, I'm going to slip it over to my other needle without knitting it or purling it or just slipping it. But they want me to slip it pearl-wise. So instead of slipping it knit-wise, which would be where I come through the front and just slip it over, I'm going to come through the front side right here from um from right to left like as if i was going to purl it but i'm keeping my yarn in the back so as if i'm going to purl this stitch i just put my needle in it and slide it over to the other needle that's it that's all they want me to do and then they want me to knit the rest of my stitches and i'm going to do that on the first stitch of every row so every other row this stitch will end up getting knit and every other row this stitch will end up getting knit and what that does oh my gosh there's so much fiber in the air is that creates a really nice even edge on my on my dishcloth. That's what they're doing with that. Saltwater taffy from Seaside, Oregon. <laughs> Rockport, Massachusetts has great saltwater taffy. I just I don't like it. I don't like the texture. I don't like the taste, the flavor of most of them. I feel like most of them taste and are flavored the same way, except for cinnamon and licorice, which are two very, very strong flavors. Seaside's great, though. Um, yeah, it's this nice, quiet, little sleepy town. Lots of little stuff. Newport's a lot of fun, too. There's um, there's a Moe's out there. Moe's is a clam chowder joint, for those of you wondering what the hell I'm talking about. I, I feel like I'm a walking, talking advertisement right now for the Oregon coast. <laughs> your yarn is just as beautiful, though. Never seen your colors. Oh, story time. Thank you. The, and like I said, these are all actually throwbacks. These will be in the grab bags. Um... Three dollars or three dollars. <laughs> three skeins for sixty-five dollars. So that comes out to about twenty-one dollars and no, twenty-two, two, four, six. A little under twenty-two dollars a skein. Which our skeins start at twenty-eight dollars. Most of these uh, yarns will be a fair amount of these will be kitty glitter or gradient yarns. So they would actually normally be in the mid to high thirty dollars per skein. So it's a really really good deal. We get to a point where we have so much throwback that we just need to get it off the, um, we need to get it out of the studio. And also it means that I can take those funds and I can restock the shop, which will make everybody happy, including me. 
You finally know what is wrong with your digestive system. Still not better, but hopefully getting there. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad that you know. Um, you've got a blockage. Do they know if it's Crohn's though or diverticulitis or anything like that? Blockages are the worst. I'll buy the Oregon Coast package. Yes. Excellent. You haven't talked about Pal's Bookstore or Multnomah Falls yet. I have not. You are correct. Pal's Bookstore is one of the... Lar I think it is the largest used bookstore. Is it in the northern U.S.? I don't remember. But it's fucking large. It's like three or four blocks. And then it's three or four stories high. And it's all used books. I mean, they have, they have not used books, too. You can get lost at Pals very easily. Everything is coded by different colored rooms. Um, and then there's a coffee shop. When I was a kid, we didn't have a lot of money. And so going out for, as a family, we couldn't really afford to go to a movie or anything because that gets spendy when you've got four people, right? So we would go to Pals for hours and my brother and I would roam around and we'd look at different books and then everyone would take the books that they were looking at back to the coffee shop. Joe and I would share a cookie and my parents would get some coffee and we were each allowed to pick out one book that was less than ten dollars basically so joe and i would just go through all of the books that we got trying to decide which book each of us wanted it was um man it was some of the best time seriously <laughs> you need a physical soon where i'm crossing my fingers that it is not something epically suckage and that it's taken care of quickly for you do I knit with chunky yarn too? I knit with all sorts of yarn story time. Uh, you give me that yarn and I will knit with it. So yes, I've knit with chunky. I've knit with lace. I'm all over the place with my yarns. You've seen pictures of that story. Yeah. You want to visit that bookstore for a week. <laughs> Even for someone who grew up in the tattered. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much is heaven. Uh, winter. It's, I, I can't explain it. I feel like it is. Like the Alice of, in Wonderland of bookstores. That's the only way I can put it. And it's weird because it shouldn't feel whimsical, but it totally does. It's just a basic bookstore, but it's an old building um, with these really old wooden um, massive bookshelves. And here's what's really, really cool. I'm going to go on a tangent here. So my brother and I used to do this thing called, um, you guys know what geocaching is? Or, no, is it geocaching? I don't remember. Where, you know, you uh, you answer some questions and it gives you coordinates and you find stamps and stuff with by putting them in your phone. We didn't do that. We did a different version of that that I don't remember what the name of it was. But you basically answered some questions and it would tell you to turn right and walk this amount of, uh, of steps and then turn left and go here, so on and so forth. And then there would be a secret place where somebody had hidden... Um, a journal and a stamp and you would take that stamp and stamp your journal and then you would use your stamp to stamp the journal that was left there so there was one for pals books and we roamed pals for two hours answering the questions finding the books they were talking about finding the next clue and going to the next space and finally we found where they had hidden these uh these stamps and it was hidden in a secret compartment i'm not gonna tell anybody where it is but in a secret compartment of one of the bookshelves like where you had to move all the books off and find the false shelf piece and pop it open and there was just like five different stamps in there two different it was so cool it's just shit like that all the time You stopped buying books back in 2012 because the new ones are so expensive and there isn't a used bookstore here. Yeah, we got rid of a lot of our books because so many of them are digital now, right? Now, there there are special books that I've uh, kept a hold of. And then, of course, I have my... Um, so, you can't really see a lot of them. I think you can see Call of Cthulhu, but all of my gaming books are over there because I need copies of those in my hands. And then these right here are a two-part omnibus for Strangers in Paradise, which is a... Um, it's a um, graphic novel, comic book that I highly recommend to everybody. It's probably my favorite comic of all time. <laughs> it was pretty epic. Is that the biggest bookstore in America? I believe it's the biggest used bookstore in America, Brittany. I don't know if they can get away with calling it the biggest bookstore in America because of Amazon. I don't know. I don't know what Amazon is these days anymore, really. <laughs> Having Haribo Happy Cola gummies right now. I don't, oh, oh my gosh. Haribo Happy Cola gummies. I've never had the cola once. I don't like Coca-Cola though. But I do like the pineapple. Let me see what T's question was. My apologies. Like I said, sometimes I miss questions. 
What size knitting needles do you need to make slots and can you cable needles to make socks? Okay, so you can use cabled needles to, uh, circular needles to make socks. Absolutely. And um, who was it that answered you? Miss Monster is correct and she's like the queen of socks. Uh, the size depends on the yarn and your gauge. Um, most people, yeah, usually use like sizes zero to two for socks, I would say. And they use a sock weight yarn, which is this right here. You can make um, chunkier socks, like for house slippers and stuff. I really like to make DK weights house slippers, and I use like a size four or five for those. No, six. I use a size six needle for those. And I like those because they're chunky, they knit up pretty fast, right? And they're super cozy. TK loves his. Gummy snakes over there. Mm -mm. Gummy bears. <laughs> oh my gosh. The gummy bears just make me think of the holidays again. <laughs> You've had Kindles for a few, a few times since they came out, but you still have an issue with them. You need the real book itself. Books have a smell to them, right, Winter? TK has a whole library of um, comic books from uh, mostly Silver Age comic books from like the 70s, right, in the 60s, maybe early, early 80s. And you like you step over in that area of those bookshelves and it just smells like paper memories. I don't know how else to explain it. It's such a beautiful smell and it's, an, it's a very organic, unique smell and... It, yeah, there's digital books are very sterile. Like they're great for reading. You know, you get your lighting that's great and it's, it's compact and you can take it with you and that's all wonderful. There's something about holding a book or a comic or a graphic novel in your hand and owning it. Yeah, of course. Gummy bears versus polar bears. Yes, yes. You saw a gummy bear in the Halloween leftovers today. <laughs> I also use Libby too. Can get audio and ebooks. Yeah, for sure, Miriam. Vegan gummies are hard to find, but I used uh, to love gummy bears. So apparently, the sugar-free gummy bears on that they used to sell on Amazon. I don't know if they still do. Apparently, they were not great for the digestive tract, and they gave people the poos. And <laughs> The comments section of those particular sugar-free gummy bears is the stuff of legend. Like, the comments in there are epic. They're so funny. Um, I don't know if, they're st if it still exists. This was years ago when I read them. Uh, but they're pretty. if you can find them, it's pretty hilarious. You can't wait till about... It's the last Saturday of April. There is going to be a fiber festival at a fairgrounds near you. Marie, that is exciting. There's a two circle knitting needle technique for knitting in the round. There is indeed, Casey. There's also a uh, technique to knit two socks or two sleeves or two gloves at the same time that takes two knitting needles. I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. I've never fucking done it. <laughs> like, it's really daunting. I should try it at some point in time, but that wouldn't, I would have, I would wanna buy like two pairs of needles that are set needles instead of my interchangeables because I want them to be the same length and everything. I just have not done it. And there are a pair of socks that I need to make here sooner rather than later. So maybe that's how I'll make them. Um, but you guys know how I feel about socks. So if I can get them done at the same time, maybe, maybe they'll actually get completed. Yep, those are the ones. Gummy bears are hands down go to when sugar crashes, accompanied with orange juice. Yeah, because that's all they are, Emily. You're totally fine with the washcloth, but you're an experienced knitter. You just hadn't knitted for a long time, so you used it to refresh your knitting skills. Have you finished it? I would love to see it in a show and tell. Your hubby picked up some gummy bear treats for the kids, and I read the back, and there is a laxative effect warning. <laughs> yeah, for real. Don't eat too many of them. You've done two socks at a time on a long cirque. I even taught a class on it once. <gasps> On just one long cirque? Oh, that sounds dangerous, Miss Monster. Sexy, too, because dangerous knitting is always sexy. Okay, so we finished this round. We're on the back side again. Remember, we're not going to knit this first stitch. We're going to slide it over as if we're purling it. So come through this way and slide it over. That's all we do. And then we're going to knit our next row. We're creating what's called the garter stitch right now where you knit both sides. And the reason that you're doing this with your dishcloth, and you will find this on almost all dishcloths, that the bottom and the sides will all have that garter stitch. Garter stitch does not roll once it's taken off of the needles. 
uh, stockinette stitch will roll and it will roll hard. So you'll end up with a, like a little cone basically. The garter stitch stops everything else from rolling. So that's the reason for that. You can use a moss stitch border. There's a lot of different types of stitches you can use as a border, but a stockinette stitch, which is where you knit one side and purl the other, it's gonna roll like nobody's business. Just ate a handful of Twizzlers. Oh, have you tried the um, the natural Twizzlers? I, they're they're not made with additives, so it's like cane sugar and stuff like that. They're kind of, and the I think the dye in it is actually natural too. So they're kind of a a duller red. They're not the bright red. They're so delicious. The chew factor on them is better, I think. One on a 40, 42, the longest, I think it's 42, yeah. She is a magician. Have you seen her socks? They're magic socks. All the gummy bears gave me was a sugar headache. In high school, the club's gummy bears chipped a tooth. What? <laughs> the orange cream twizzlers are your favorite. Uh, do you guys remember those Tootsie Rolls that were fruit Tootsies? And they were like this big and you'd get them a Halloween time, right? Like it's one of the candies. So you've got your, your levels of candy, right? And normal little brown Twizzler, or not Twizzlers, but Tootsie Rolls and, um, and candy corn, no offense. <laughs> kind of like at the bottom of the barrel. It's that stuff you don't want. And then the fruit uh, Tootsie Rolls were kind of like one notch up. They were tasty, but they were kind of boring. The vanilla and the orange, you, we used to take it and we'd like twist it together and be like, ah, it's so delicious. Why does it roll? Ashton, that's a really great question. Um, I think that it's just the nature of the beast. The stitches, okay, actually there is an answer to that. So if you look at a rib stitch, the purl stitch that is in a rib stitch, because it's knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, the rib stitch wants to come in on itself. So if you have um a stockinette and the front side is all knitted stitches and the back side is all purled stitches what happens is that the um the fabric wants to curl in on itself because the back side is all those purl stitches which want to curl in and so if you've got it laid flat up with the front side showing with all those stock the, all those uh, knit stitches then it's going to curl in onto the purl side and if you've got the purl side showing it's just going to roll forward so that's why it does it it's those purl stitches kind of just coming in on themselves that's not the scientific answer, but it's the best I can really come to come up with to show you a visual uh, to to help you visualize it. You ate a blue tootsie roll just this morning. Those are the vanilla ones, aren't they? <gasps> Dollar Tree sells them. What? They still exist. Fruitsies are my out. They're so good. They're just so delicious. Like even like. The little um, Smarties, like I would trade my brother the Fruitsies for the Smarties because they were chalky. I wasn't a big fan of those. But man, oh man, those those fruity Tootsie Rolls, so good. You've never been much of a fan of Twizzlers. Mm, I have mixed feelings about Twizzlers, so I feel you on that one. You guys have three whole minutes until the next round of Wheel of Goodies and Goof'em Up. So if you haven't hit the subscribe button, make sure you do that. Just push the little button. Um, and make sure you hit the like button too, you guys. The more likes we have, the more likely our show is to be in somebody else's feed. And that's really, really important. It helps us grow. And if we're not growing, what, you know, we get stagnant, right? Um, so this is the year of sharing because sharing is caring. So make sure you hit that like button. You love sweet tarts. They're good. I just, if I eat more than like just a few couple of them, my tongue gets really, really distressed. <laughs> what else to call it? What's up, TK? Oh, snap. I should do it right now. Yeah, I forgot to draw two names from the subs when we spun the wheel last. So I'm going to go ahead and draw two names now. Then it'll be time for the wheel. And then we'll do it again before stretches. So it's going to be bam, bam. So we're going to go ahead and let me just grab this real quickly. Choink. Copy. We're going to come over here. To, yep. To our desktop. There you go. It's like a little field trip. Control V. Come down here. Do some maths. Get some YouTube comments. Hmm? 
Um, so we've got eight comments. We'll go ahead and push the start button. Samantha Stewart, congratulations. You are our second finalist for the subscriber giveaway if you're here. <laughs> yeah, Samantha Stewart does. She's really good about commenting on all of our shows. So that's what she gets. She's got a really good chance of being one of our finalists each time. So just keep that in mind, guys. Samantha Stewart. Okay, so she's been added on here. We're going to go ahead and get the next show up real quickly. Just one sec. We've got one more for this little round. Pop back over here. That one's easy. Nine. Okay, this one's got 10 comments. This is exciting. Now keep in mind, if Goth Emo Raver or Samantha Stewart are the uh, person chosen, then we have to pick somebody else. Brianna Maloney, congratulations. You are our third finalist for the subscriber giveaway. Let me get your name over here. I wish I could just copy it. Um, Brianna Maloney. I can remember that. I can figure that one out. There we go. So, should be able to go like so. Perfect timing. So, we'll just head on over to... What do you think of ups, kiddos? It's time, it's time. This real quickly. Congratulations. I know it's super exciting, right? And then we'll grab two more after we do our wheel. So the legal bull stuff. The boring stuff. I have a ticklish little spot right here for my hair. It's driving me crazy. And I know it's this piece right here. So we're just going to put that behind my ear. Because it's driving me nuts. And then we're just going to do our quick winner. Michaela Brown, congratulations. Let's just make sure you're not on the list. I think I still have it up. I thought TK got it up for me. There's my spreadsheet. You are not fantastic. So you are our second contestant on the Wheel of Goodies and goof -em ups Let's get that wheel out. Ba, 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 ba. Hello, wheel. It's so good to see you again. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and spin it. We got good stuff on here. We got bad stuff on here. If you just joined us, as always, thank you so much. We're thrilled you're here with us. It's going to be a surprise for you, though. So let's pop it up. It's a merch code. Congratulations, Michaela. Congratulations. You're a winner. That is good for one free sticker and one free button on your next order from bosskittyshop.com. So just go ahead and message me in Discord here so I can get you your code for that free sticker and button. Keep in mind once again that those, um, it's a one-time use and that it expires after one year. Thank you so much for being a subscriber and we'll, we will see you in half an hour. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. So I know normally we'd go straight into stretches, but because I forgot to pull the first two subscribers, we're gonna go ahead and pull the next two subscribers that we would normally do for the second round. So let's grab that. This is from show number 52. Just gonna do this real quickly. I feel like it knows that my math sucks and so it's made it very easy for me now. Oh, that one says divided by rut row. Okay, so 10 more comments here. Elizabeth McGinnis, congratulations. You are our fourth contestant on uh, for our subscriber giveaway. Let me find that wheel. There you go. We've got you on there. And then we're going to pick one more until our next round of Wheel of Goodies and Goof em Ups right over here. Nine, is that divided by nine? Sure. <laughs> oh, did I get it wrong? It says, it doesn't say divided, it says plus. Okay, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I thought it said divided. There we go. 12 comments on this one. Crochet Hooked, congratulations on being our fifth finalist for the subscriber giveaway. So very exciting. 
Okay, so there you have it. Those are our first five finalists. We will have two more that we will pull the end of our next uh, Wheel of Goodies and Goof em Ups. In the meantime, you guys. It's time to stretch. Is it is. going great panda how are you we're just getting ready for stretches so if you if this is your first time with us we like to stretch about halfway through the show maybe a little more than that it's good for your body you know you're doing a repetitive motion even if you're just sitting here watching me um it's good just good for some movement and blood flow in your upper body so go ahead and turn your neck to one side or your head to one side chin go as far as you can make it go you can use your head to press a little more if you want to You breathe in and out when you breathe out go ahead and try to push it just a little further and then slowly release that and then we'll go ahead and go to the other side just like so feels so good okay now we're going to go ahead and just tilt our head to one side really working out that neck. It's so important because you, you tilt your head forward a lot of the time when you knit and crochet and your poor neck is in the same position and it's holding your noggin and your noggin is like working real hard on those stitches. So it's probably even heavier with all that brain power, right? I'm making bullshit up now. Now we're going to do the other side. Oh, it feels so good right here. It's really funny though. It's that my glasses hit just along my eyesight on this so I can barely see things. Like a cat when I wake up in the morning. That's good though. Kind of roll your shoulders. So I'm going to roll my shoulders backwards a few times. And you want to just roll your shoulders. Try not to move everything else. I'm really bad at that. And then move them forwards. Like this. And then see if you can do this. I feel like I'm in the 80s again. And then the other way. All right, now that we've been silly, now you're going to go ahead and send your hand out and we're going to bring it across our chest. Hold on to it. You're just kind of stretching out your shoulder and your arm a little bit, mostly your shoulder and your back a little bit. Very creaky, right? Making BS up all the time. It's, it's, uh, it's my calling. Everything is crackling today. I also stretch out my legs while we do this in case anybody's wondering. You guys just can't see it. Um, okay. So we're going to go ahead and extend our other hand out, bring it across, and just sit here and reach, reach for stuff. <laughs> you always keep your head tilted to the right when you crochet. Um, if I'm really, really, really concentrating on something, like hard, and you guys don't get to see that very often because I try not to work on super hard things on the show, my tongue will go out to the side. I get that from my grandmother. I love and she used to do that too. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and take our hands. We're gonna um, we're gonna put one hand on the table and take our other hand and pull on our um, fingers so it stretches it back. You're gonna feel this in your wrist mostly, but you'll also feel in the underside of your forearm. Ooh, this hurts today actually. Woo hoo! I really thought all my tension would be in my neck because we've been kind of stressed with the house stuff the last few days, but really this one is I'm feeling this. Oh my gosh. There we go. Ho. Oh. Do the other side. This side, not so much. This side feels like it's golden. It's no big deal. Just breathe in and out. Let yourself get grounded a little bit. You know. Try not to take a nap though. Not yet. You drool when you focus too hard. Turned into a lot of damp exams back in the day. It's very cat-like. Okay, now you're going to take your hand and you just want to go limp. You take your other hand and you're gently going to press down. I'm really just trying to bring air, oxygen to my wrist at this point. Your tongue sticks out when you're trying, when you're concentrating as well. Oh good, it's not just me. Didn't realize how much I needed those neck stretches, but wow, did you need that. You never realize how much you need it until you do it, right? Like my wrist one, I was like, holy shit, I had no idea. Do the same thing on the other side. Feels so good. You guys, my tattoos have finally healed mostly from the um, from the touch-up, and they look so much better. She got all those spots that were missing. They're amazing. Like, I could not be happier. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and rotate these out a little bit. 
I wish you could hear the pop that's going on in my right wrist. We'll go the other way. No catnaps allowed while crocheting or knitting, right? Just like <laughs> doing going to go to the bedroom lay down with Wednesday till boyfriend comes. No worries, Marie. You have a great day. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to our workspace. You guys know the drill. We're gonna go ahead and just release some tension in our fingers. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees and toes. Sorry, I just can't help myself. I'm gonna go the other way and then go to the middle ones. Man, it's so far off. Like I'm on my middle finger while the thumbs are going right now. It blows my mind every time. And then we'll do our final ones. And you just kinda, you know, so my pointer finger on my left hand when I knit too much, and I go like this, I can feel this all the way into my um, elbow. It's been a long time since I've had that problem, but I'm having it a little bit today. And that's because of the tightness in this elbow. So yeah, but that's okay. It happens. I'm aware of it. And that's the biggest thing is to be very self-aware of things like that. Oh, my hair's a hot mess. What is going on? Anyway, so now that we've done that, we can get back to our knitting, which might be looser now because, you know, I'm all relaxed. So once again, we're going to slip this front stitch, whoop, just like so, and then just start knitting. Your thumbs pop when you bend them and your, and your wrists. Yeah, it's so crazy, Crocheted, the places that you can feel some of these stretches. Because you don't expect to feel it there, and you do. Um, Wisdom Queen is a professional masseuse. She's amazing, by the way. And... TK went to go see her once and he was like, he's having a lot of hard back pains and shoulder pains and all sorts of pains everywhere. And she had him lay down on the, on the bed, on the uh, massage table. And she went, boom. And his whole body went, Burr. and she's like, is that it? And he's like, yes. How did you figure that? She's like, it's just the way you're laying here. It's pretty obvious. So it's really just mind boggling the way all of the different muscles connect to each other and your your nerves connect right the fact that you can push something in your hand and feel it all the way up in your ear and that's really true like if you push too hard on a spot in your hand like i can feel it in my ear it makes my ear ring it's terrible um but it's just fascinating Proper toes under while your feet are on the floor and you don't realize you're doing it. Your husband, your family thinks it's weird. It's not weird at all. I think it's adorable. And it's it's interesting the things that, that are tight on your body that you don't realize are tight. So like I like to do hip stretches every day. I my my hips get very tight. Um when I hurt my knee a few years ago, I really favored it, and so it screwed up my back a little bit and it screwed up my hips. Uh, my knee is better now. I've had surgery and all that jazz. But my hips are still not great because of it. And so I like to do these hip stretches. And I can do the stretch with no problem on my left side, which is where my bad knee was, the side I favored. No problem. I can like stretch over there. I get down. I'm all My nose is to the ground, basically. It's fine. I try to do it on my right side, and I cannot get my left elbow to the ground. Like I have to force myself into that position it gets better each day but it's just it's crazy what the difference is between the two sides so once again i'm just going to slide this over and knit across now i'm going to teach you guys a little trick here once i finish this row because i'm just doing so um, garter stitch so it's really hard to tell which is the right side and which is the uh, back side so the front side and the back side i'm going to show you how you can tell that with a long tail cast on <laughs> You have to sleep with a wedge because of your darn tight hips, right? It's just miserable, Michaela. Your shoulders are always tight. You hunch them up constantly and you tense. With, yep. TK uh, hunches up his shoulders and he puts his arms right here like this. And sometimes he'll be tense about something. He doesn't even realize he's tense. He'll be sitting there watching TV and he does that. I'm like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, why? And I'm like, you're doing this. And he's like, oh, you know, I think I'm stressed about something. And then we'll talk about it and he'll figure it out. So it's amazing once again, the way that your body um, kind of gives just these tell little tales or telltales of what your brain is thinking, right? What your emotional distress is, or if you're happy or if you're sad, it, it, you know, 
when you're stressed, you're, you hunch over, as an example. When I'm feeling really rejuvenated or proud of something, I stand up straight, which is not something I do frequently because I forget to. Time for massage, for real. Massage therapist finds all the way up into your back of your head. Yeah, right? Oh my gosh, head massages are so good. You sleep sitting up or you feel anxious and you can't really crochet. I think I would be anxious trying to sleep sitting up. But I know a lot of people who feel that way. Like they have a hard time breathing if they're down flat. We have an adjustable um, frame. And so it is at a curve to a degree. It's really funny because when we got it, we laid down on the mattress. And I was like, no, I hate this mattress. It's too, it's too firm. And the guy was like, hold on, because TK loved the mattress. He pushes the button and he just adjusted the feet a little bit and the head a little bit. But it meant that my hips could relax in proper place. And he's like, how's that? And TK's like, it kind of feels the same. I was like, no, it feels amazing. Because I'm a lady and I have hip hips. <laughs> You're going to frog it? What? Are you, wait, what are you frogging? Now it's too tight to go. Oh, no, JK. I wish I could have massages, but I can't have those to go to chiropractor. Right? Oh, boo. I already thought of it. Mm -hmm. I already thought of it. We're on the same page. Uh, how's the new mats doing, mates? I'm very confused by that question. Okay, so this is my front side. The only reason I know that this is my front side is because my long tail here is on the right. It's on the right hand side of the of the um, of the fabric. And I know that because when I was putting them on here and I finished, right? Because this is how you do this, right? So my tail ended on the left-hand side. And then I turned to do my first row. My tail was on the right side. So an easy way to remember that. Your, right, your front side is your right side is what they call it. I hate that term, but this will be helpful. So your right side is where when your long tail is on the right side of, the, of your knitting. So if it's on the left side, that means it's the back side. If it's on the right side, it's the front side or right side. That's how you remember that. Um, when you don't have a pattern that's obvious about which side is which. Um, so let's go ahead and count our rows real quickly. We've got two, four, six. And the way I'm counting these is because this is a garter stitch. Each, I started this 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 row, the, the front row is always, a, they're all knit stitches, but I started with the front row knit stitch, right? So that's this guy right here, this indentation. So that means this bump is gonna be um, where the, the second row. So I can count in twos by the bumps. So two, uh, two rows, four rows, six rows. I need to do seven rows, I think is what it said. No, technically I'll be doing eight rows. Slipping the first stitch of every row purl wise with yarn at back, knit seven rows. So I've already, I knit the one row and then I knit an additional seven rows. So it's gonna be eight rows, rows total. So I have two more I need to do. That's how that goes. <laughs> mattress the new mattress the purple mattress i love it so much it's so comfortable been a while since you had a message massage therapist I remember one time they first found your old skull fractures had to let them know i no longer no longer but oh i'm glad to hear that you're not with that person anymore elizabeth cupping is amazing i love cupping you love deep tissue massages making a note right now to schedule it <laughs> perfect Uh, Deborah, oh, I'm so glad you're having fun and that it's been helpful. That's what we're here for. Every Wednesday, we do kind of a wild card thing. So I might be spinning. I might be uh, carding some fiber, might crochet. We've done a lot of knit tutorials the last few Wednesdays, just the basics, like how to do the knit stitch, how to do the purl stitch, uh, how to read a pattern, both the charts and the, um, the written out stuff so that's kind of what we're going over right now we're putting it all together basically and making a dishcloth that is in our discord if you want to join us um and i'll touch base on this next wednesday as well just to see where you guys are and if you have any questions but i think we might spin next wednesday um let's see and then mondays we do our make along which we're doing a cardigan through may right now or until may right now so i'm finishing up my lay poof if i have time i might do a, a hexagon the the uh, hexa cardigan you guys know what the hell I'm talking about. The granny squares. 
the hexy cardy. Do you have a friend? Uh, it's a crab bag yarn that didn't work out. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Let me see. Ginger. Hi, late to the party. What is the gorgeous green and yellow yarn? I... <laughs> okay, let's go over these real quickly. So these are examples of what will be in the grab bags. We have a ton of grab bags that we're going to have available to our patrons as of the beginning of the show on Monday. Uh, so patrons will have first grab at those for 48 hours. And then they'll be available to the public at the beginning of the show next Wednesday if there's any available. So this is an example of what will be in those grab bags. Like this one right here was Come We Fly from our Toil and Trouble box set. It was our Sanderson sister inspired color. And it is the same colorway. Like this is spot on the color. But I processed it for too long. So the Stellina in it isn't as glittery as it normally is. You can see the difference right here. Um, so it went to the grab bags. There's like four or eight skeins of this. I don't remember, but it's still really soft. It's still a lot of fun to use. It's just a very, it's the glitter in it is very dull. Like you can't see the sparkle as much. These two right here, perfectly fine skeins of yarn. I have God, probably about 10 total of these. I don't even know. Um, but this is widow flower, OG widow flower and cold as ice, but they are in BKDK weight kitty glitter. And we don't carry that. And I had a box of it. So we threw these in the grab bag. These are hard to get your hands on. Honestly, we don't carry it very often. Um, in fact, they will have kind of makeshift labels. They'll have the kitty glitter labels on them. That should work. I have to make sure that the, um, the percentages for the content of the yarn is the same. This right here was also a toil and trouble um, throwback. This was originally going to be our Sanderson sister colorway. I had based it more on uh, Winifred. But I didn't like how it turned out for the Sanderson sisters. It was still really pretty though. This really deep uh, forest green works really well with that mustardy orange. And then you've got these red speckles throughout it. It's a very um, fall-esque color. It's very bold. And then this right here, which I kind of want to make a normal colorway because it's so gorgeous. When I was doing the yarn up for my make-along, I wanted everything to be on a gray base. You know, I did... Um, Henson and Oz on a gray, gray base is an example. Well, this is Fairy Farts on a gray base. And I love how it turned out, but it wasn't quite right for my sweater. So it went into the grab bag. There's only one of these. And then there are a few others like this, very similar, but not quite exactly the same. So there's just a little speckling, no pun intended, of smattering, I guess, of what will be in the grab bags. If you want to guarantee that you get one, I highly recommend heading over to patreon.com slash boss kitty and signing up as a patron. Even if you only do it at the $5 level for a month just to get your, uh, your, your uh, grab bag, it's totally worth it. Seriously. I cannot guarantee that these will be available to the public because they tend to sell out really fast and we only have a finite amount. So you can take, de definitely take that chance. There's, there's always a good chance that there will be something on Wednesday, but if you want it guaranteed, it's going to be Monday for the patrons. Ooh, what a lot of words. It is fairy farts on gray. You're obsessed with that gray fairy farts. I know it's so good. And it might someday become a colorway because I'm really digging it. I feel it so hard. Like it's so muted and just gorgeous. I feel the same way about the uh, Henson and Oz, honestly. With chronic back pain and disc trap nerve problems, you're too afraid to get a massage in case they do something wrong and cause more problems. That is understandable. It does look like a pumpkin patch. You're right. Thank you, Rosie. Your daughter would go insane for cold as ice. It's, I love that color so much. It's one of my favorite blues. It and Timey Wimey together looks so good. Okay, that is seven. We're going to do one more row, and then we have finished our border. We're not even into the lace yet, you guys. You guys have about seven-ish minutes, I would say, until our final round of the Wheel of Goodies and Goof em Ups. Foggy Fairy Farts. Ooh, I like that. That's good. I said this is the unsealy court, TK, and that normal fairy, cards, uh, fairy farts is the sealy court. And uh, Jinxie Doll said the exact same thing, so... I'm glad somebody else was on the same page as me. Oh, with the BKDKs? I very much so, right? It's that tealish, greenish color. I love it so much. When we first got it, I wanted it to be really pale, and I accidentally put more dye in there than I intended, but when it came out, it was so beautiful. I was like, nope, this is it. This is what I'm going for. The end.
you would totally buy the gray based fairy farts maybe add a little tiny bit of black speckle to make them extra gritty that is not a bad idea and then I, it's not quite fairy farts either yeah I call it I can call it fairy grat now fairy gravel I gotta think on that one we'll come up with something I suspect it might be in the near future because it really is a lot of fun Still here, getting the kiddos of chaos in bed. No problem. Oh, fries sound so good. The lavender is love. This is widow flower. It's, uh, yeah, I love this color so much. And it's actually changed. This is OG widow flower. It's a little more pink than our normal widow flower these days. Here's the difference. Because this colorway, the dye is no longer available. So we had to change it up a little bit. But I actually really like the new one. So you can see the difference here. This has got more of a little blue tone to it. And this has got more of a pink tone to it. Um, they're both very, very lovely, obviously. And you can see that, um, you can definitely see the glitter in that DK Kitty glitter yarn. Fairy Fort. <laughs> Pixie Pavement. Oh, that's good. Fairy Pebbles. Uh, I call it Hobgoblin Hiccups instead of Fairy Farts. That doesn't work very well. You hope I do BK DK kitty glitter again in the future as DK weight tends to be my go-to yarn. We'll do it someday. We added so many new yarns in 2021 that like I I couldn't keep up on getting them out there. And it was rough because we added uh, the DK weight that year. We added the kitty glitter that year. We added something else that year. And I don't remember. Oh, the mohair. Like all three of those we added in the same year. And it was a lot and so we're kind of taking a year or two off now with the house buying as well. Like definitely as far as adding new bases and stuff, we'll still add colorways and stuff and do the box sets. But maybe next year we can add the BKDK in there or a luxury yarn like a silk or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out though for sure. Together because friendship is the greatest power of all. What? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Cassandra. Okay, there are all eight rows of our garter stitch. And you can see it does not want to um, roll at all. It just sits there hunky-dory happy. <laughs> Urban fantasy. Ooh, I like that too. Ooh, a cashmere would be really nice for sure. Like a BFL and cashmere would be lovely. Okay, so now we are doing a setup row which is where you're setting up for your, your lace, basically. And this setup row is you're going to slip your first stitch, knit five, purl to the last six stitches, knit six. Okay, that's pretty simple. So we're getting into stockinette is what that means. So we're going to go ahead and you always, your first six stitches will always be in garter stitch and your last six stitches will always be in garter stitch. If you have a hard time remembering that, you can take a... Um, you can take a stitch marker and you can put it right after those six stitches and right before those six stitches to help remind you. So in this case, though, this first stitch gets slid and then I'm going to knit five. One, two, three, four, five. Five stitches. Ah, ah, ah. No worries, Trina. No, I like explaining it to people. So don't wish away out loud. I love it. Would the grab bag yarns go well with the mohair yarns? Dawn, absolutely. Um, really, it just depends on which colorway you want to put with it. If you hold the mohair with a DK weight, you're going to get kind of an Aran weight yarn. If you hold the, maybe even a little chunkier than that, technically, if you hold the fingering weight with the mohair, it comes out to a DK, basically, a, a heavy DK. Um, and it's very squishy, very lovely. Um, this would look really great with... Um, with bath yellow as an example obviously you could keep it safe and play it safe and do widow flower with widow flower um, although it is a different tone of widow flower keep in mind um this would look really great with radioactive or um gosh oh my gosh why can't i think of words right now ectoplasm jeez that was hard this would be good with widow flower um these would also be good. Any of these would be good with sassy pants. This would be really good with brass monkey. Um, it might actually work well with ectoplasm as well. Clearly you can put cold ice with something like this. I mean, there's, and that's just these colors that are out right now. 
<laughs> one whole minute you guys okay so now I'm gonna start purling I've got my yarn in the front and we're doing the purl stitch instead we're gonna do that to the last six stitches and once you've established that it's pretty easy to tell you can tell where your stockinette stitches are and you can tell where your garter stitches are ectoplasm <laughs> hello cat Jensen how are you tonight you need something to go with Cynthia's lunchbox and mohair. Um, okay, let's think for a second. Widowflower definitely would go with Cynthia's lunchbox. Oh my God, that would be gorgeous. Because you would have that really vibrant pink purple on the outside, right? And then this very light purple at the base. Uh, it would look like a exotic fairy flower. No joke. Like that would be really, really pretty. Ectoplasm is your favorite yarn of all time. It is a hot commodity. I've had a lot of emails lately. When are we going to have it back in stock? So... It is on the priority list, as is Fairy Farts, for those of you who are wondering. Cynthia's Lunchbox is always on the priority list, although right now we do have a few in um, fingering weight, which is nice. You're still casting on, Kayla? That's okay. You take all the time you need. Seriously, this is not a race. Hello, Thirsty. How are you tonight? Triple T. Ashton, do you usually use mohair with something else? Um, it can go either way, Ashton. You can use mohair with something else, or you can use it by itself. I have a um, kind of shell top that would be worn over a halter top that is just mohair, and it's beautiful. It looks like this fuzzy, beautiful yellow web. Um, but you can use it with or without other things. And our mohair in particular, I'll get to the game here in a second. Our, I just said I'd get to the game in a second. <laughs> our mohair in particular... Um, it's very forgiving. Uh, you can undo it. You can frog it if you need to. It doesn't really felt on itself the way a lot of other mohair does. And it's got silk in it. So the core of it is silk. Do you want to toss me a mohair, actually? Uh, ectoplasm or widow flower. One or the other. Why not both? So here are two examples. You can see... The core right here is much brighter. That's where the um, that's where the silk is. And the silk kind of gives it a nice drape, which is why you can use it by itself. And like I said, it doesn't felt on itself nearly as bad as a lot of other mohairs are. I mean, I can sit here and pull it apart like this with no problem. And you can do a center pull with these, which is unheard of. You can see the same thing on this one. With the widow flower, that lighter color is on the um, is on the silk bits in the middle, which is lovely. So yeah, you can use it by itself. You can use it with um, with yarn and you're not going to have a problem with it generally. Thank you, TK. Okay, you guys, it's time for the final round. Okay, time for wheels of goodies and goof em ups. Mm -hmm. Okay, here you go. And then we will go straight into um, our subscriber giveaway. In fact, how are we going to do that? We're going to do the subscriber giveaway. Draw two, and then I'll do it with the patrons, and then we'll draw the subscriber. That way there's a break in between there. Okay. Sorry, we were having an office chat. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Beautiful. Oh, Michaela, thank you. Little Brat, congratulations. You are our final contestant of the evening on the Wheel of Goodies and Goof Mups. Okay, so let's get to the wheel. Ba, 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 ba. Hello, wheel. Okay, let's see what we can do. You guys know what's on here? I'm just going to spin because we have so much stuff to do. Don't go. You're up. <laughs> it's a blinky roll. Congratulations. That's exciting. Congratulations. You're a winner. Okay, so TK, you want to hit... Pick a random colorway, because these are all grab bags. Any random color will do. How about a final front? No. Hmm. He's just going to pick one. So these are the two that are up for grabs right now. You can't even see them. Wheel, I will see you in a little bit. Well, I'll see you on Monday. Goodbye. Goodbye. So we've got Tales from St. Olaf and Widow Flower because they happen to be on my table right now. So if I roll a natural 20, little brat, you win whichever one of these skeins of yarn you want. It's in D BK DK weight. So natural 20. That's all we need. It's one natural 20. Shipping's on us. All of it's on us. Why does this dice hate me so much? Game over. Blinky's on a hot, vindictive... 
I don't know what's going on with him, but he's a jerk. Look, it's another five. You can't even see that. Anyway, unfortunately, that was not a natural 20, little brat. But thank you so much for being a subscriber. And the plus side is, is that you are eligible to play again on Monday. Okay, so let us go right into getting our last two finalists on here. Okay, so that's on there. I think that's four. Hey, I did it right. 15. Hot damn. Okay, so we have to do it again because Samantha Stewart's already a finalist. So let's go ahead. Do I have to push the button again? Three. I think I do. Here, we'll do it again. Also already a finalist. This has never happened before. That's okay. We'll get through it, you guys. It's okay. But clearly they have a really good chance because they've commented multiple times what is happening right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, look at that. Congratulations, Michelle Stanley. You are our sixth contestant on the Wheel of Goodies and Goof'em Ups. I'm doing it right now. C-H-E-L-E, S-T-A-N-E-L-Y. Fantastic. We got to pick one more. Just one more. Ugh. TK is so great. He, like, preps this whole thing for me. He has the URLs ready for me. He's got the numbers. Like, this is number 49. He's just the best. And I still make a hot mess out of it. Do-do-do. <laughs> 16 comments. Ooh la la. Oh my gosh. Why is this happening? Michelle, you would be picked again. Brittany Michelle, congratulations. You are our final contestant on the, um, for the, um, you're our finalist of the finalist. I don't know. Uh, for the uh, subscriber giveaway. Let me get your name on the wheel real quickly. Uh, let's make that go away. We'll go back here. Before we go ahead and pick our finalists, though, I just want to give a quick shout out to our patrons. So, thank you to all of our patrons. This is updated today, right, TK? He said it's updated. Thank you to all of our patrons. You guys absolutely help us get that extra oomph out there. You, um, We adore you. We love the support that you show us. Um, and if you're not a patron, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can get as a patron. You get early access to grab bags, box sets. You get to vote on colorways a lot of the time. Uh, you get exclusive colorways and box sets. And in fact, if we hit 100 patrons, our um, reward for that is going to be that we will have an exclusive Patreon colorway that you guys get to choose. You'll help me name, and it's only available to you guys, and it will always be available to you guys. Uh, you also get cool things like the... Um, the, uh, the, blah, 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 the fleece to project, um, fleece, blah, 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 fleece to finished project that we've been working on. So definitely go check it out. It's patreon.com slash boss kitty. I promise it's put together much better than my mouth is apparently. Okay. I know the list has just gotten so big, Michaela. I love it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go back to our desktop because we're going to head over to that wheel and we're going to pick our subscriber. Are you guys ready? I'm so excited about this. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna hold my breath. Uh, 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 Elizabeth McGinnis, congratulations. You are our subscriber giveaway for, um, for January. That's so exciting, dear. So if you're in here, I believe you are, um, go ahead and message me. There you are right there. <laughs> message me in Discord so that I can, I need your email address so I can send you that gift card 
for $30 to bosskittyshop.com. It does not expire. I don't believe, maybe it does expire in a year. I have to double check with TK. Um, but it works just like cash. It is basically cash in the store. So feel free to use it however you want there at the store. We are so thrilled that you're a subscriber and part of the Boss Kitty fam. Thank you so much. Um, if you are interested in winning the subscriber giveaway for February, all you need to do is make sure you hit that subscribe button and that you comment on at least one of the February VODs. The more VODs you comment on, clearly the more, often, more likely you are to become a finalist for the subscriber giveaway. So definitely make sure you take a few moments to do that. Okay, kiddos, do you know what time it is? Woohoo! It is time, I believe. Am I right? I'm always right. Only if my segments work though. Time to clean up. Yay! Okay, it's time for show and tell. Dio, aka Jesse from Texas, days one through sixteen of a hundred days of mini amigurumi, and new yarn bowls we're thinking about printing. Ooh, I'm very excited. Okay, so let's see. This is one through sixteen, right? I want to see how many you did in sixteen days. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh my gosh, you actually did one a day. That is so cool. Also, these are really cute. You've got so many little foods in here. I love the pizza. Maybe because I'm craving pizza. The bumblebee is super cute. The lollipop is adorable. I see a strawberry in there. These are really cute. What a great goal to try to hit. I can't wait to see all 100 of them. And then here's the yarn bowl that you guys are thinking about starting to produce. I love them. I like that you have a crochet version and that you have a knit version. I also really dig the uh, change in color. That's really cool. Dio, these are great. You guys should be really proud of these. Wandering Bear, working on dyeing some midis this weekend, hoping to formulate a yellow green to go in my rainbow fade for a lay poof cardigan. Ooh, I love it. These are beautiful. What a great idea. I cannot wait to see your lay poof cardigan and it's going to look great. Yes, I love the rainbow vibe here, and it's all like fluorescent rainbowy colors. Wandering Bear, these are beautiful. Thank you for sharing. But Chibi, it's been a wacky Wednesday. Crazy busy. First pick, my mood this morning. <laughs> Sipping my tea. But then we got some new pics of our soon-to-be newest member of the fam. Oh my gosh, family. Meet they. No name yet, because we don't know gender yet. Just now opened their eyes. Mood was instantly restored. Last pick is working on a baby blanket. Okay, you sassy as fuck when you have your morning mood this i wish i looked this good when i was sleepy grumpy mood also i love your mug this is great also oh my gosh look at that little squishy flat faced adorableness congratulations they are so perfect you're gonna oh my gosh i just want to eat their face that nose is too cute that kitten is gonna be trouble look at the pink on the tips of their paws it's so perfect oh I love baby kitties so much. Mm. And then here's your baby blank. Oh, that looks so cozy. Love the colors. That kind of like mauve color with the pale buttery yellow and the pale blue. I just love it when things are like kind of diluted like that. And that yarn just looks so soft. I know that kitten is too much for me. It's so cute. One more time for the kitten, guys. Gosh, it's so cute. How is that real, right? It's just a little perfect little kitten. Crochet Mom, first is a scrap yarn tote bag that I'm working on. Next is a random ribbing that I'm not sure where I'm going with it yet. Last is a throwback pick of my wedding day. I love the tote bag. I personally, am, my favorite is the darker and light colors here at the top. But all together, like it's coming together really well. I like the blues together. I like that you're using more than one color blue. This is your random ribbing that you're not sure where it's going yet. And that's okay. You don't have to be sure where it's going. Sometimes it just tells you as you go. Uh, this yarn looks really great in rib stitch though. Like this, the, the white really comes through on it. And then a random picture as the last throwback picture of my wedding day. Oh, how sweet. Well, I don't know if it's your anniversary, but if it is, congratulations. If it's not, belated, belated congratulations to when you guys got married. You need to go. Yeah, seriously, right? <laughs> it's the cutest thing I've seen all week. Emma, blanket update. I was working. I was off work yesterday and got quite a lot accomplished. Oh my God, you really did. You're so fast. Oh my gosh. And it's so beautiful. I think the last time we saw it, you were just doing the red, white, and blue stripes. So you did a lot yesterday, girl. That is really impressive and so beautiful. And your stitches are just... I'm jealous of how good your stitches look. 
in a good way, of course. De Buns Buns 420, sweater I'm working on for myself. My first self-made design. It's so good. Is this the one you were talking about that was like all really, really bright colors? I'm so in love with this. I love how obnoxiously bright it is. I like that you have that checkerboard with the kind of more pale pastel going on in the background, but that the really fluorescent -y bright colors are all just solid, bold, fuck yous. So good. Like, oh, you should be so proud of this. And here's a little more detail on it. Oh my gosh. Seriously, be super proud. This looks great. How are you so fast? Right? Right? Laura, I knew you'd love this. Here, one more time for Miss Laura Bronner. <laughs> You've been crocheting since you were five and coffee. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, Jinxie doll. No yarn projects worked on this week. That is okay. I don't have the attention span for it. So here's some of the stuff I like this week. I love it. That's perfect. Number one, my birthday was on the third. And one thing I love to do is start a new candle. So here's my favorite maker in Minnesota, Clean Haven Naturals, and one of my favorite fragrances, along with a gift for my coworker. Marshmallows by the fire. Oh my God, that sounds delicious. This is my problem with the yummy smelling candles is I want to eat them. And I don't know if I have enough willpower not to try to. Don't ask. That's really, really, it looks like a lovely candle. And what a cute enamel pin. Like really, really, I love the colors. So good. Number two, I have a meeting with my DM tomorrow to discuss some things with my Way of Mercy Monk poet. Same character I shared out of last week. We're going more into some of his background, and I'm super excited. Oh my gosh, it's always really excited when you get to sit down with your DM and really just flesh out your character, yeah, and see what they're comfortable with. And sometimes they'll kind of give you some ideas. And the best part of that is if you have a decent DM um, and you give them that backstory, they will incorporate it into the game, which I love. Okay, my favorite snack is <sighs> Tukboki. Tukboki. <laughs> Thank you for phonetically spelling that out for me. I appreciate it. I like to make mostly Korean recipes and I have learned to make them by hand too. This isn't the usual spicy sauce you'd find in a video, but they, but just very basic butter with cinnamon sugar. What are they made out of? They look so interesting and yummy. Oh, we had shrimp for dinner, but it was like at four o'clock this afternoon. I'm hungry. Skittles Kid. Socks I made for my kid on, uh, for V-Day and some art I did this week. The socks are adorable. I love the black throughout them. It really kind of just dims out those really bright colors. I hope your kiddo loves them. And then, oh, you did some Kiki art. It's so good. I love it. You got the eyes right, just right on the kitty cat. That's oh, wonderful. And then we've got a tortoise. So beautiful. I really, I like the splatters around the outside of the circles on both of these. It really kind of makes the, the art piece in the middle pop. Here's my washcloth. It needs blocking, I feel. So this is Trina's washcloth that she did out of the pattern that we made. It's beautiful, Trina. Congratulations to being on the first one done. Definitely block it. I want to remember it's a dishcloth, so it's going to get blocked kind of anyway, right? Oh, we still get wet. Um, and that yarn color is beautiful, by the way, that nice gray. Dawn, show and tell finally looks like I figured out the spider stitch for Alt Knot Spider Stitch January make along. Made with Red Heart Super Saver Ombre yarn. First blanket made on my Addy machine made with discontinued Red Heart acrylic yarn. Completed mood snood made with Premier Chanel yarn. And thank you for letting me share. Sending endless positive vibes to everyone. Oh, thank you, Dawn. So you figured out the spider stitch. This looks great. Congratulations. I'm really glad you figured it out. It's such a beautiful stitch. These are, I can't wait to see all of your, your rules as um, blankets when they're done. Because they're really going to be beautiful. And then we have the first blanket you made using your Addy machine. How do you feel about your Addy machine, by the way? I'm curious. Um, I love this. I like the line in the middle. It's really cool. And then here's your snood made out of a Premier Chanel yarn. Um, also looks really cozy and I love the colors. I'm not usually a pastel person, but the black and gray really makes it pop. And so it works out perfectly. Miss Monster, progress on the lace socks for my sister. This is about halfway through the cuff. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Yeah, you have so much more patience than I do. And you're on double knit needles. <laughs> Mittens for kittens. I know, the flowers on the bottom are su super cute. JK knits for you, since I must frog the cat sock. Ooh, 
that's what you were oh a sh here are shiny with some side eye Warian being cute and my new cat paw hand exercise stretcher thingy i love it look at these kitties they're so damn cute they know they're cute that's the problem like that side eye you know what they're doing i love when kitties put their paws together like it's just so proper and prim Oh, this is really cool. So it looks like it massages the bottom of your hand and you squeeze it and do some strength exercises with it. That's really neat. I need to use my hand massager that TK gave me for the holidays. I keep forgetting to do that. Yarn Pirate. Washcloth Progress. Cast on the beginning of stream. Did you really? <gasps> and Goose approves. It looks great. I love it. You're much faster than I've been about it, apparently. <laughs> Uh, Panda, I don't remember if I showed this one, but I'm recently painting in my new fire orange hair. The paint, you have not shown these paintings. They're beautiful. I love them. And I like the simplicity in them. Um, I know you get some real in-depth paintings a lot of the time. So I really like this. I like that you've got the, the dark palette for the night and the more, you know, bright and upbeat palette for the uh, daytime one. And your hair is magical. I'm so jealous of it. And I'm, what I'm jealous of is how good it always looks on you. So... Live it and love it because you can rock it like no one else can. I, I couldn't do that, quite frankly. I used to have, like, fire engine red hair in the front. Barely got away with that one. <laughs> Matt, some skeins of who knows what. My first socks and my baby motorcycle. She's my baby. Oh, these are great, though. Nitty Gritty. What a great name for a yarn. I really like this gray one off to the side, Matt. This is good. Congratulations on your first set of socks. That's really exciting. Uh, and they look very, very cozy. I'm always amazed at how long socks look, right? Like you put them on your foot and it's just fine. But the foot on a sock always looks so big to me. Knitted socks. And it's because it doesn't scrunch in on itself the way a commercially made sock does. It makes sense. They look really great though. Oh my gosh, there it is right there. I love the color. That like kind of wine red color. It's good. And then there's another one right here. I don't know which one's yours, but they're both pretty cool. I've never been on a motorcycle, ever. I'm a klutzy person. It's a, probably a bad idea. Okay, my loves. What a great show and tell. You guys are so amazing. I'm just going to do confetti all day long. <coughs> and that. <laughs> you can knit faster and mess up faster on the Addy. That's fair. That's fair, Dawn. You guys, I absolutely adore you. Just keep in mind that we will be releasing the, um, the bo uh, not the box up, it's the grab bags at the beginning of the show on Monday, this coming Monday, for our patrons. So if you want to grab one of those, make sure you're signed up as a patron over at patreon.com slash boss kitty. If not, they will be hopefully be available on Wednesday if we have anything left over at the beginning of the show for everybody else. And they are three skeins of yarn for $65. Um, other than that... Yeah, be warned that as this progresses with the house buying, um, we're supposed to close in the middle of March and then we have to move. So there is probably going to be a week or so in there where we have some dark time down while we're moving. And you guys are going to have to, like, we have to put the studio back together. It's going to be interesting. So we might have some patron exclusive content for that as well regarding um, changing the garage into like a dye studio and things like that. So That'll be patron exclusive content as well, watching us change that over. We love you guys. We think you're absolutely fantastic. Uh, you are the highlight of my week, 100%, aside from my husband. Um, so do something wonderful for yourself this weekend. Go out and do give, give yourself an adventure. I want to hear all about it on Monday. Go for a hike. Go to a new restaurant. Try a new game. I know the Super Bowl is this weekend. I'm not doing Super Bowl. We have people coming over for board games on Sunday instead. But if you watch the Super Bowl, well, then do that. But do something and tell me all about it on Monday. This is homework. I'm going to ask you all about it and call you guys out on the spot on Monday, more, uh, Monday evening. So keep that in mind. We love you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And as always, my loves, happy crafting. Goodbye. Good night. Yeah.